Welcome to the second part of the video on the planning and controlling of operations. In this video, we will consider other aspects of planning and controlling of operations management. But first, let's do a review of what we learned in the last video. In the last video we defined the planning and control of operations. We defined planning and controlling as the reconciling of demand to supply. We also identified the two types of demand. These are dependent and independent demand. Where dependent demand is predictable due to known factors, independent demand is unpredictable and estimated. We also identified activities or tasks when planning and controlling operations. These are loading, that is, how much work is allocated to a work center. Sequencing, which refers to the order in which an operation responds to demand. And scheduling, which has to do with when to respond to demand. Another aspect of planning and control has to do with the periodic intervention in the activities of the operations. When intervening, this requires more of controlling than planning. Considering this, there are two main intervention approaches. These are the push and pull strategies in managing operations that facilitates the delivery of goods and services to customers. Now, let's examine these approaches. The push strategy. In the push system, activities within the operations are scheduled based on the instructions from the central system. Work for each work center is pushed forward irrespective of if the next work center is ready to receive or use it. This approach is usually used when dealing with an independent demand. In this case, products are pushed towards the consumer without knowing the nature of the demand. Using the push strategy when planning and controlling the operations of an organization comes with consequences. For example, push strategies could lead to idle time within the operation if subsequent workstations are not ready to receive tasks passed on to them. This leads to queues or bottlenecks. This triggers the need for inventorying which attracts costs. As for the pull strategy, customers act as a trigger to the activities within the operations. The pace of the operations is determined by customer demand and requirements, hence why it is called a pull from the customers. The operations process from supplying to production begins only after the customer makes a demand. In this way, demand is transmitted back through the stages from the point of demand by the original customer. Most organizations that use a pull strategy when controlling their operations likely deal with a dependent demand. This is because customer requirements are known before the production process commences. It is clear then that the nature of planning and control in any operation will depend on how it responds to demand, which is in turn related to the type of services or products it produces. There are three main ways organizations use their operations to respond to demand. They could either make to stock, make to order, or resource to order. These approaches also reflects the type of demand the organization handles. Now let's consider these approaches one after the other. Make to stock. This approach is usually used when an organization handles an independent demand. The operations is structured in a way such that products are produced prior to receiving demand from customers. In this approach, the sourcing and production stages would have been completed, while the delivery to the consumers is pending. This is similar to using a push strategy when responding to demand. Make to order. This approach is usually used when an organization handles a dependent demand. The production phase does not commence until demand or orders are received from specific customers. In this approach, it is ensured that the sourcing stage is complete whereby the resources required to satisfy or respond to customers' demand are kept in stock. The pull strategy is usually used in this approach to respond to demand. The third approach is an extreme case of using a pull strategy to respond to demand. This is the resource to order approach. In this approach, the sourcing, production, nor the delivery stages does not commence until demand is received. Once demand is received, resources are purchased and produced, or transformed only when specific demand from customers are received, hence resourcing to order. Can you think of case organizations that use either of these approaches to respond to demand? Note, some organizations use a combination of these approaches to respond to demand. Pause the video here. Identify an organization that uses either of these approaches and justify this by discussing the type of demand the organization handles. 
Now, let's review what you have learned so far. What is planning and control? What is the difference between planning and control? Dependent and independent demand. What is the difference? Identify and summarize planning and control activities. Explain in your own words push and pull strategies. You might need to refer back to the part 1 of this video. Pause the video again to attempt these questions. So what have we learned in this video so far? There are two main strategies used to structure the operations used to respond to demand. The first is the push strategy which is when the operation schedule is centrally determined and the goods produced are pushed toward the consumer. The second is the pull strategy which is when the operations process is triggered by the orders placed by the consumer. This is a pull from the consumer hence the pull strategy. We have also learned how organizations use their operations to respond to demand. We identified three approaches. Make to stock, which is when the organization sources for the resources and produces its products before receiving demand or orders from customers. Make to order. This is when the organization starts to produce only after receiving demand from customers. And resource to order, which is when the sourcing for resources used in production commences only after receiving a demand. That will be all for this video. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.